Lois drops by Sonny's office to surprise him, and they hug. He asks what brings her to town, and she says she's checking on her daughter as Tracy screwed her over. She doesn't want to talk about the Quartermains, and they sit down to some biscotti as she catches him up on the old neighborhood. Sonny shares photos of his kids and grandkids, and Lois can't wait until Brooklyn has kids and thinks she and Chase would make beautiful children. Lois says speaking of cops and changes the subjects to him being brought in by the feds. He calls it a case of mistaken identity. Lois grows hungry, so she decides to use his kitchen to whip something up. She brings out some pasta and tells him that his kitchen needs a bit of work. Sunny says she's happy she's back, and she says she's happy too. Brooke Lynn finds Eddie at the piano at the Quartermains. She says she's meeting Blaze to sign her today and asks if he wants to come meet her. She suggests maybe Blaze will like his new song and want to record it. Eddie passes and says when he finishes the song he'll be singing it. Tracy appears and tells Brooke Lynn she needs to sit down with her and discuss her real future. Brooke Lynn states she has no desire to discuss her future with her granny, as she'll have no part in her future after what she did. Tracy tells Brooke Lynn that one day she will need her, and they will talk about her future at deception. Brooke Lynn storms out, and Ned asks if threats are the best way to deal with her granddaughter. She says it always worked with him. He asks why she just doesn't offer her the company, and if she turns her down to take no for an answer. As Tracy rants at Eddie for his navit, Olivia enters and asks her to stop badgering him. Tracy admonishes Olivia for not forcing Eddie into some intensive psychotherapy unless she prefers Eddie over Ned. Olivia again says she won't commit her husband, and if he wants to be Eddie for the rest of his life, then she'll make peace with it. Tracy fumes at her and storms out. Eddie thanks Olivia for defending him. She tells him that he's a wonderful and kind-hearted man, but she'll never stop missing her husband. Olivia heads out. Blaze arrives at Charlie's to meet Brooke Lynn and is glad to see Christina. She gets a text from Lucy, who won't stop hounding her about being the new face of deception. Just then Sasha and Sam enter, and Blaze knows that's who she'd be replacing. Christina introduces Blaze to Sasha and Sam. Blaze excuses herself to take care of something. Dante and Cody arrive, and they grab a table with Sam and Sasha. The men apologize for being late as they got caught up with Dante's home renovations. Austin sits at the bar, and soon TJ joins him. TJ says they need to talk about his cousin. Austin doesn't give a damn about Mason, but is grateful to him. The men flash back to TJ stopping Austin from killing his cousin. He thanks TJ for saving his career and his future. TJ says Mason did something terrible to him. So he assumes Mason must have done something equally as terrible to Austin as well if he was willing to smother him. Austin didn't feel he had another alternative, though perhaps he should have turned him into the police long ago and saved everyone a lot of trouble. TG says, right, and departs. At a new cafe, Cafe Sherry, Lucy waits with Martin to meet Blaze, and she refuses to resign their offer to her in spite of Tracy. Blaze arrives, and Lucy introduces Martin. Blaze tells Lucy that she's just going to get this over with and lets her know she has to pass on her offer and thinks she should stick with the face she has. Lucy fumes and tells Martin that she doesn't know if Sasha still wants to be the face of deception, and Blaze would have been perfect. She blames Tracy for this and will show Tracy who she's dealing with. Lucy kisses Martin and rushes out. Back at Charlie's, Brooke Lynn arrives, and Christina tells her Blaze had to step out but will be back shortly. Blaze soon returns, and Brooke Lynn presents her with a contract for her to go over. Blaze goes over the contract and thinks it seems straightforward. Brooke Lynn calls Christina over to witness the signing, and they are officially in business. Christina brings them some beers to celebrate.